live from the Walt Disney World Swan and Dolphin Resort in Orlando, Florida. It's the Q covering Splunk.com 2016. Brought to you by Splunk. Now, here are your hosts, John Furrier and John Walls. Okay, welcome back, everyone. We are here live in Orlando for .com, which is Splunk's seventh annual user conference. This is SiliconANGLE Media's The Cube. This is our flagship program. We go out to the events and extract the signal from noise. I'm John Furrier with my co-host, John Walls. This week, one year on day one. A lot of stuff going on. Big keynote tomorrow about adaptive response. Big security announcements coming from Splunk. What a better time to have this next segment. And, and John, I couldn't have said it better myself. <laughs> We've got High and Song with us, who is the um, SVP of security markets at Splunk. Also, Monzi Mercer, who's the head of cyber research. So, uh, thank you both uh, for coming in. Appreciate the time here. Without, I, you know, I, I know you can't let all the covers you know, off, but give us an idea a little bit about, you know, conceptually what the Adaptive Response Initiative has been about, how it's evolved, and maybe a little bit about where you think it might be going. Yeah, sure. Yeah. We're going to try to get the, the announcement out of it. No, go ahead. <laughs> be happy to. Um, Adaptive Response is an initiative that we announced at RSA this year and it's really the first Splunk-led industry initiative. And the key tenets of that is around sharing, coordinating, automating, and so in a way that we want to harness the power of our ecosystem and harness the power of all the security technology working together. As we all know, we cannot fight the war on our each of our own island. So, Right. It'll override our microphones. Right. This is so part of the adapt and response the, uh, concept, the adapt when blocks. things change. Yeah, we're all about it live in the moment, but <laughs> yes. that's, that's where the action is. So, so let's, right. Right. Let's, get, let's get into the, uh, the security thing, because again, we've been having conversations on theCUBE. Yeah. We'll be, I think we'll be at over 100 events this year. Yeah. It is the number one conversation on everyone's mind. It's not even as well, there's no second place. You can't even see what second place is in terms of conversation. But now it's a boardroom conversation. It's not just an IT or operational conversation. It's a real business driver. And it's causing changes in the data management. So this adaptive initiative is interesting to me because it's kind of enabling a new paradigm in the industry. And I love it because it's so organically growing. Data sharing now is now one of the fastest growing trends we're seeing in terms of something that's coming out of the woodwork relative to Splunk and in general in, in use of data in real time, whether it's for autonomous vehicles or uh, security, data sharing has contextual value for a lot of other environments. So this contextual aspect is a security paradigm. What is that conversation that you guys see with your customers? Why is all, all this coming together and what, what are the CXOs and CIOs talking about? Um, so adaptive response also came from customers wanting a security ecosystem to work together, want a security solution that come integrated so they don't have to go and do all the hard work of putting them together and risk that they don't work well together. Um, from a board level perspective, we totally see that, right? The CSOs, the CISOs, whatever name that the they CDOs, end, the, the CROs, CIO, CIO, right? there's many all different them. names, <laughs> but it's all end up to how can you translate the security incidents and the possibilities of having those incidents to how it's going to impact my business, the reputation, the revenue, the customers, and that's why from all product perspective, along the way, we have always taken a risk-based approach. Uh, Mazi will talk more about that tomorrow as well. How do we blend in the business risk in a way that is right in front of the analyst eyes, so when they take action, they're guided by the priority of how it's going to impact the business. It's a really interesting conversation because there's two theaters that are exploding in, in relevance. One is the technology theater, yeah. which is all about big data and Splunk. You guys, this is every day we, this is what we cover the event. It's like all the goodness every year happens. Customers are happy, people smile, so much value is being created. But the business theater is also on fire. People's business models are at risk. So I want to get your guys' thoughts, perspective on how, this, how you see the sharing. Is it growing fast? Can you share some examples? And how that's forcing companies to make a trade up between old compliance, other risk management conversations that are so small in comparison to the consequences of a hack, a breach, fraud, because that's a, that's a takedown move. That 
hackers are going to do with customers. I mean, people, you know, forget the psychology of no one ever hiring the executives ever again. There's real business the loss. Root, the root of this is really when you look at the digital transformation that's been going on over the last couple of years now, it's a reality. There's, people are running a lot of services, leveraging services on-prem and in the cloud. You look at how we consume things, whether it's ride sharing, whether it's getting a hotel room, or whether it's buying something or getting our prescription medications. All of these things are becoming more and more central to how we live our daily lives. What that's causing, and I think that's the reason why it's becoming a boardroom conversation, this data now is becoming a strategic advantage and the business is trying to realize that. So as people start to share that, we're now getting beyond this notion of, we used to talk about data governance before. It's now organizations are starting to have CDOs, for example, the chief data officer, whose job is not necessarily to conceal and hide this information, but how to govern and share this information across multiple organizations. So now what's happening as a result of that is you have the same set of data, and you have the security analysts looking at the data from their lens, you have the application developers and, 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 and the administrators looking at it from another end, and you have the IT operations folks looking at the same exact set of data to identify root cause analysis, to do better troubleshooting, so they can enable and move the business forward. So I think that's where all of this sharing and all of this intersection is coming from, and now it becomes, to your point, a board level conversation, because all of these different silos that used to be silos in the past are now all part of this one, one piece. And cloud accelerates that, because you see the data sharing and the organic, people who are in the know, see value, and then just make it happen. The pioneers, if you will, the guys who take down, you know, the pioneer, pull out the fields for everyone else. But here's the issue, right? The data warehousing market was a fenced organization, and the compliance built around that, and freeing the data up is causing value. So we're seeing this notion of data value come directly related to sharing of data. If you free the data and let it be flowing, but you know, manage it still some degree, but don't lock it down. So the question is, how, or the question is, have you had conversations with customers around data value as an asset? Um, because now you're getting into the conversation of these, this data set that we're extracting out of Splunk easily is going to impact the bottom line from a cost perspective possibly, efficiency, et cetera, and also revenue top line for thwarting attacks and driving business. So you got two ends of the spectrum covered. Do you put it on the balance sheet? I mean, because the guys who are doing the work want more budget. Right? They want to they fund more developers, they want to fund more data scientists. How are people doing this in, in the business out there right now? Maybe I'll take a step sure. at this. Um, so when I was hearing you talk about freeing the data, I love that concept, right? Um, for us, it's the more you can put this in front of your users, our users are super creative and insightful. And it's the more you can make it available for them to really look at this and gain valuable insights, the more they can think about how they can use that. So one of our themes is security should become an enabler for the business. And when you go to the board, when you go ask for investment, it's not about, well, you know, this is going to be bad if you don't invest. It's more about, if I have this data, I have this visibility, I can enable others to do better, and I can provide this service, and this service would render, you know, revenue for the company. So, so I love the concept of free the data and let the data go and speak, and, and we have something called listen to the data. And uh, I think if we free the data for other people to listen, that's well, great. Well, the Splunk audience and your customers are very much pioneers. They're also you know, very smart, and great yeah. community. And the threat detection teases this out. So as you get these new use cases, because what's happening is, is a new, you guys are a new way to do things. So people have, and I think we're hitting a threshold here where they're rethinking how they do things, a little experimentation, but scale's getting up. Yeah. So now the challenge is how do I operationalize it? So the question for you guys is, as you take, talk about freeing the data up, which is a architectural paradigm, okay? Make things open, Splunk is plugged into that. How do you operationalize it? How do you scale through the organization? And how does Splunk enable that specifically? I want to I want to address that by way of your, the prior comment that Hyann was making and, and how the freedom of the data and operationalizing, I think those two are very tightly intertwined. I was having a conversation with a customer, this is probably about three weeks ago or so, they brought a fairly large team to our, to our offices in, in, on, on Brandon Street in San Francisco. And this, this customer is a very large industrial manufacturer, think the really, really big things. And, and they said, you know, we know that we can manufacture certain things that nobody else can manufacture. They don't have the resources, they can't get the raw material. 
But what concerns us is not our number one or number two competitor, but there's two people in a garage who have data analytics capability that can take the data from the, the, the things that we create and are able to find real tangible value. Real tangible value from the things that we create and that, and that value from the data supersedes the, the value that we have from the actual physical thing. And so that's, so to your point about sharing is, Mark, it's not just about, it's not just about geeks in a, in a, in a workshop thinking when worrying about this data sharing. Data sharing is a direct initiative for these very large organizations who are concerned about that. So then we translate that to say, okay, from a threat perspective then, what, what is it that we care about and what is it that organizations need to yeah. be concerned with? So they're no longer just concerned with who has access to the thing, who can walk into a door and who can turn something on or turn something off. Now they're more, now they're more concerned with who can mix data together from disparate data sources. And from an operational perspective, Splunk is at the forefront of enabling our customers to operationalize this mingling and this contextualization of data. So two people can sit across the table and, and come from very different disciplines. Doug talked about this morning about our customers at, at, at Harvard University doing informatics on genetics. Yeah. And so how do you take that and bring those two pieces together? So I think that's, that's the key of operationalizing and that's what Eric and guys had it right that's with a free download model. Anybody can do it okay. and it's operationalized. I think you're right on the money. I think the old expression in the HR business was, oh, your human resources, and your talent assets walk out the door every day, meaning the people. Yeah. In this case, the data is flying out of the company every day, and if they're not harnessing the data, they lose it. So the, your, your, that example is a great one, because here you have, they're focused on the asset on the balance sheet, their core business, when in reality, what he's saying is, the data is still part of the core business, I don't want to lose it. So okay, now that brings up the data value question. Do we put data on the balance sheet? That's something that we're working on with Wikibon, but no one knows what that, how do you do that? How do you say this data's worth X? It's hard. Well, I don't know I can put a dollar amount, <laughs> but I can use an analogy. Um, you know, through the different sort of revolutions the industry is going through, and you know, currently it's energy, it's, it's oil, it's, it's, but it's moving towards, I think data going to be the new fuel for the economy. Let's talk about security. I want to yeah. take that to the next level. So I've been observing uh, Splunk now for multiple years doing theCUBE and interview all the top executives, customers. And besides the community is so happy with Splunk solutions, I'm seeing an emerging fabric developing around a social network because people are sharing not only the data, you're seeing personnel, and this comes back to the initiative and some of the ecosystem moves, you guys made some investments and other things. The ecosystem's starting to self-form around some of these challenges, especially security. They're overmanned, over teched out by the, by the orchestrated hacks and, and attackers. It's becoming a social network for security people. And the second thing observation is you guys are compositely building solutions with the tooling, but yet not restricting the customer's creativity to your point earlier. Was that part of the plan and is that, key, is that going to be part of the plan going forward? Did I get that right? Am I seeing that? I mean, it's still a weird observation, social network, but it's kind of happening. Is that? It's yes and yes. It's kind of by accident, <laughs> on purpose kind of thing? Um, I, I think in a way that that's our DNA, right? You talked about it's in our genes. In our genes, the founder started with is we want to really make it available, make it accessible, valuable to our customers. And we're just carrying that. And, and the customers are carrying us in a way of teaching us how valuable data can be. I think it's a, what's the right word to use? It's, it's we help each other escalate or the, or the value up. So do you right? see that kind of like standing on the shoulders of each other's customers kind of thing, open source kind of concept where solutions are going to come into this portfolio of security from the outside? And inside, is that how you guys see what it? I, what I would say is we historically, and speaking as, as an ex-Splunk customer, and, and is, is that Splunk has always been focused, we just don't listen to our data. We do that, we do that really well, we listen to our data. We listen to our customers. And customers are the ones who discover these new use cases, and they're the ones who come and push us forward to say, do more, do it like this, give me more capability here. And, as you've been around Conf, you've, you know, you've seen .conf grow over the years, and that in itself is really a, a demonstration 
of yeah. customer trust and customer commitment where more and more customers come every single year and say, you know, you're doing this really well, give me more of this. That thing, I'm not quite sure. And so we, and we. They're building on top of it. They're not yes. like context switching They're, they're their building apps. and we are, and we're continually focused on making sure that they're successful with the things that they want to do. And so we keep feeding that as, as the customers take, take chances and they explore more. So, I mean, Haiyan mentioned this earlier that, you know, it's, this is, all of these things are part of an ecosystem. And, and security in particular is really an ecosystem problem and an ecosystem solution. And so we learn from our customers, we learn from our partners, and we just keep building okay, and So if I'm a customer, together. pretend I'm a customer for a minute, I'm say, hey, you know, I have a big problem. And I want to solve it by sharing certain parts of my data. My data geeks mapped out what we can share, with some little risk there, but it's worth sharing. How do I do it? Do I connect with other Splunk hubs? I mean, is Splunk becoming the exchange point? Um, do I talk to Threat Connect? What do I do? What's the playbook? So um, one of our customers, uh, they picked Splunk Cloud as the solution. One of the reasons they picked Splunk Cloud is they said, well, then you would just enable us. If we want to share the data, you, you can just open it up and we don't have to go through any extra steps. So that's certainly one venue for us to do that. And because once you put everything in the cloud, you can decide what access you grant to whom and, and to what so level you want to share. share. It's easy to share. So we have customers who really just went to the cloud with that in mind to say it's, uh, they allow researchers is to go easier, and look at. Is it easier for Splunk customers to share with other Splunk customers versus non-Splunk customers? Probably. The I, think I like to use yeah. the. Sorry, go ahead. I want to use the example of our large financial customer. Right. There's actually a video of that on uh, on Splunk.com, where because the data is so valuable, and you you alluded to that earlier. Yeah there is less of a desire to share it outside of the business than it is to say, I'm a large financial services organization. I have hundreds of thousands of employees, perhaps thousands of data scientists and developers. So what this financial services customers did was, they had a week long hackathon. They opened and they, they opened the different data silos within their own organization, brought that data into Splunk, brought people from different organizations and different teams and really let them hack at it. And they went from analyzing the data to developing applications on top of Splunk to actually deploying three of those applications that were developed. We're talking a week's window for a financial services organization. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> QA alone would be three months on any app and so, under so, the normal process. So when, you, so, so when we you talk about you know, democratizing it, getting, the, the, getting eyes on it, operationalizing it so it's actually useful, and then extracting real business value, I mean, we go back to the, the, the question that we started with. Why is this a boardroom conversation? Why is Splunk in more boardrooms? That's the reason, because you can go from getting the visibility to actually make, making use of it to get business value in a very, very small window of time. Okay, final question, um, well, two parts. Um, first, what are we going to hear tomorrow theme-wise in the announcements? I know that's kind of under wraps for the keynote. Uh, tomorrow is a big announcement. And then, um, your thoughts on, just in general, what, what's going to happen in the industry to accelerate the um, defense and security? Um, a lot of people are saying we're still far behind, got a lot more. It's like we got more work to do, pedal faster. So, how do you go faster? And what are some of the highlights we're going to hear tomorrow? I'll or? take the first part, you answer the second. <laughs> <All right. laughs> so, uh, tomorrow's keynotes, um, it's, the, it's themed around transforming security. So transforming security is around what can we do together as an industry, like uh, Manzi was saying, solving security problem is an ecosystem problem, it's not a one man sort of fighting on their own island type of situation. So we'll talk about in general, not only how security in the cyberspace is transforming itself, and how overall in a bigger picture, right, defense in general at the national level, how that's transforming. And of course, what are some of the product capabilities and new solutions that's supporting that transformation? So, love to have you guys come and and uh, we'll be streaming it live on SiliconANGLE.TV right. and on the Cube. Right. Um, so, transformation message that yes. a new way has to be built. Yes. And a new way to defend. Yes. I'm guessing team sport kind of concept, but we'll see. <laughs> and so, uh, just how do we go faster? How do we get? How do we level up, if you will, in the security world against the bad guys? So, I would. Just as a technologist, you know, I, I would like to, to say that the things that we are looking at, you're going to hear some about some of these things tomorrow, is we're, we're really going back to the drawing board with the research work that we're doing and we're saying, 
what if, it's not about pedaling faster. What if you didn't have to pedal at all? <laughs> yeah. what, is, what is the real problem and how do we address it? I think a lot of the reasons why we've done things, and by we I just mean as a technology industry. ecosystem in the industry, reasons why we've done things the way we've done them is because we were constrained, not necessarily by imagination, but by the capability that existed in the Lego blocks, so to speak. And so we build things the way we built them. I think we are no longer constrained by those or we can at least, or at a point we can give ourselves the permission to think beyond what was capable before. And so that's, those are some of the things that we're going to talk about tomorrow as so well. It's essentially like, rethinking, it has to be rethought through. It has to be rethought and it has to be, to Heinz, but it has to be rethought together. One person's rethought is not going to get it done. Guys, thanks so much for sharing uh, the security. Longer conversation, we could do a whole day on this one topic. Uh, mm -hmm. Cyber, super important, and obviously changing a new way, being operationalized in real time, hopefully faster, <laughs> automatically. <laughs> this is theCUBE, broadcasting live here in Orlando. Day one coverage, be right back with more coverage after this short break. <laughs>